Hi everyone. I'm going to talk about the poem Spring by Edna St. Vincent Millay. So this uh, video is going to assume that you've read that poem at least twice. If you have not, pause the video. Go read the poem Spring by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to read the poem. I'm going to start with the very first line. It says, to what purpose, April, do you return again? Now, the word April is a, it's a modifier. There are commas around it, and it's being presented as a person's name. So we have personification of the season, April. There's a question. What purpose? What's your purpose being here, April? <laughs> it's a very direct question, almost intrusive. Then beauty is not enough. I would argue that that line, line number two, is almost a thesis statement. Beauty is not enough in the world. Darkness, death, all of that is hanging out, and beauty is just not enough to solve the world's problems. But I'll get to that deeper part in a second. But beauty is not enough is kind of like that statement of the thesis. Uh, you can no longer quiet me with the redness of little leaves opening stickily. So notice that it says you can no longer quiet me. That implies, those words imply that the speaker was at once quieted by the beauty of a flower starting to bloom or starting to grow, okay? Uh, I know what I know. So the narrator is saying, hey, I know. I know what I know. There's a sense of confidence there that at one time spring, you were in a luring moment and you did captivate me, but no longer because I have knowledge and I have intellect and I have experiences that outshine you beauty, you spring. The sun is hot on my neck as I observe the spikes of the crocus. So the, the sun is hot. So that's uncomfortable, right? Imagine being the sun pelting the neck. It's very, very uncomfortable, almost like the sun's burning. Um, the crocus is the, the beautiful flower. It's like the, the I always think of it as a purple flower with a little bit of yellow in it. You see it in the very start of spring. So yes, this narrator is looking at, the speaker is looking at, can see this flower, but it's not a comfortable moment. The speaker is uncomfortable looking at what is supposed to be beautiful. The smell of earth is good. Now that sentence, the word good is not a juicy adjective. It's a very plain, basic adjective. So it's not giving spring any glory. It's just saying, yeah, the earth smells good. Good. You know, when you, someone says, how are you doing? And you say, good. It's that banal response. Now, now we start getting a shift in the poem and it says, it is apparent that there is no death. Okay, because you have the crocus growing. Um, but what does that signify? So now we have a kind of a rude question. It's a pointed question. It's the, the speaker saying like, so what? Yeah, I see flowers growing, all right? At one time in my life, I was amazed by these flowers, but pff, earth smells good, but, right? The narrator has a very um, almost confrontational tone here with the word choice. Then we start to get a really good part where it says, not only underground are the brains of men eaten by maggots. So that's an interesting image. Underground, we bury people, and yeah, the animals of the earth eat the corpse. And But to use the word maggot is very um, confrontational. Like, oh my gosh, can you can imagine <laughs> a maggot eating the brain of a dead body, okay? Life in itself is nothing. So that's, again, kind of almost another thesis statement. So you have beauty is not enough. And life in itself is nothing. Look at the line choice. Life in itself is its own line, is nothing. Is nothing is hanging out by itself. All of this, all the prior lines are nothing. And you look at the lines, the way they, the structure of the poem, they go from longer to shorter, and then it kind of curves in, is nothing. Then it goes back out and it says, an empty cup, a flight of uncarpeted stairs. Life is nothing, an empty cup. A cup is supposed to hold something. A cup is supposed to bear the weight or in, and keep something safe. A flight of uncarpeted stairs. Well, that's dangerous. <laughs> uncarpeted stairs can lead to major accidents and death. So you have a cup that's supposed to be safe. It's supposed to hold something. You have a flight of stairs. So the cup is empty. It's not holding anything. Life in itself is holding nothing. And it's dangerous. 
a flight of uncarpeted stairs is dangerous. It is not enough that yearly, down this hill, April, comes like an idiot babbling and strewing flowers. It's not enough that yearly, down this hill. So that implies that this beer went up the hill. Now it's coming down the hill. So you could maybe think fall and winter, you're going up the hill of death, right? Up, looking around, everything's dying. Ugh. And you're going down the hill into spring. But April, here you come, like an idiot, throwing around flowers and oh, the pretty water sounds, blah, 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 blah. But you're meaningless because in the end, underneath all of this beauty of April, you still have uh, maggots eating the brains of dead people, okay? You still have an empty cup. You still have flights of stairs that are uncarpeted. You still have danger everywhere, okay? Life in itself is nothing. Beauty is not enough to solve that equation, to solve the life is nothing, all right? So when we read a poem, we always have to really slow down, read the words, kind of what is the story of the poem? What is the plot of the poem? And then break down each line. What does each line literally mean? And then what words in there imply another meaning? Okay, remember, it's a slow process. What does the line say, literally? What word choices, what devices can be used to imply a meaning? And how do those words imply a meaning? So like go with the flight of uncarpeted stairs. Literally, it's a staircase with no carpet. Well, carpet helps control the feet going down the steps to keep, to keep friction and traction so that the feet don't slip. So uncarpeted stairs implies, oh my gosh, feet can slip. You can have an accident. You could really hurt yourself. Okay. Remember literal words. What do the words say? What do they mean? How do they imply a meaning? All right. I hope that helps. All the best.